Hi guys, this is Mrs. Crib. We're going to go over the honors notes now. So please pull out your notes and pull to the go to the portion that right here. It says ionic equilibria, and we're going to follow along. I'm going to go back and forth between the notes and the prezi so we can look at a few of the visual aids in the prezi. So basically, when you start with salts, when you have salts, remember salts are going to be solids. Salts are solids. Okay. When you have a solid and you and you dissolve it. Um, you can make a saturated solution. Remember, saturated means it can hold all the solute it could possibly hold at that temperature. And then you can calculate a special case of the equilibrium constant called the solubility product constant, KSP, solubility product constant. Basically, it's the same thing as the equilibrium constant, except that we're just dealing with something that's being dissolved. So here's an example. This is calcium sulfate, and notice it's a solid. Now, if I were to write out the equilibrium const or, uh, expression for this, I would say that the equilibrium, the KEQ, is the products of the reactants. Remember that. So here are the products again. And so we have um, the concentration of calcium with a plus 2 charge. It's just an ion. Um, times the concentration of the sulfate ion, which also has a minus 2 charge. So that's the products. And then I'm going to divide it by the reactants. And these are the reactants. So the concentration of CaSO4, calcium sulfate, and it's a solid. But then we told you earlier in this chapter, when you have a, a solid or a pure liquid, the concentration value is a 1. So since this is a solid, um, this that means the bottom here becomes a 1. And all I have left for the equilibrium constant is the concentration of calcium plus 2 times the concentration of the sulfate ion, and that's it. I lost the bottom because it was canceled out. Well, that's the equilibrium constant for this reaction, but since we're dissolving something, it's also called the KSP, the solubility product constant. It's exactly the same thing, just has a special name. Okay. Now, you can um, look in the chart in your textbook, and if this one says it's on page 388, we'll double check that real quick. Um, it's not on page 388. A chart that you may need to look at is on page 398. So change that in your notes. 398 because of the new textbook. And it has a bunch of KSP values there that you'll have to refer to. And then the Prezi, I pull up those values anyway. Okay? So it, it also lists the values at 25 degrees Celsius, solubility product constant values at 25 degrees Celsius. Um, and you can input actual molarities and, and molar mass of the salt and the solubility of the salt for all of these because it has all those listed. Now when the KSP is less than 1, now remember when the KEQ was less than 1, we made an arrow and we say it's favored, it, it's in the reverse direction. That means when it's in the reverse direction, there are more reactants than products. So more reactants than products. So when it's less than one, you say that the salt is insoluble or not soluble. Insoluble. Well, that's because it's favoring the reactant side. It, that means up here, if it was less than one, it would be favoring the reactant side of CaSO4. It's insoluble. When the KSP is greater than 1, then you have, you're going to favor the product side. So remember when the KEQ was greater than 1, um, you favor the product side. So you're going to make more product. So in this case, you would dissolve it up here into its pieces. When the KSP is, less, is greater than 1, then you favor the product side. You say that the salt is soluble. So let's do an example right here. Um, and like, actually, let me go to the present. We'll look at it real quick. I have a picture. So here's another salt. This is a, a calcium phosphate. And notice it's a solid. So the KSP, the equilibrium expression, is just the reactant side because this product side would go away because of the solid. So it's just the reactant side we deal with. So it's the concentration of calcium ions raised to the third power because of the coefficient times the concentration of the phosphate ions raised to the second power because of the coefficient. 
All right, and so now this refers to that chart. Again, it's 398, not 388. I need to fix that. And the, the chart is also in your Prezi, though. So I'm going to let the chart come up here in our Prezi for us to do some of our examples. Um, let's see, magnesium hydroxide right here is the one I'm about to do. And notice it lists the, um, the KSP at 25 degrees Celsius. That's the value of the equilibrium constant then. And it tells you the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide. And it also gives you the solubility in grams per liter of magnesium hydroxide. So we'll refer back to this chart. Let's go back to the notes. So what is the KSP expression for magnesium um, hydroxide? Well, what you do is you take the magnesium hydroxide and you should do this with each one of these things that we're dissolving. Write the um, balanced equation. So we're going to break it apart into its ions. We have magnesium with a plus two charge and we have hydroxide ions with a minus one charge. Now, in this molecule, you'll notice we have two hydroxide ions, so I need to put a two right here. I only have one magnesium, so I just need a one. So really, you don't have to know oxidation states or anything to get this all the way correct, um, but it does help a little bit. Um, I know that magnesium has a plus two charge because that subscript, you know, put the charges on the top, swap and drop, pick the charges back up, and put them on top, or back to the other side. So the plus two would have been swapped and dropped and now we do the opposite. So that's how I knew magnesium had a plus two charge and this one was a one so it would have been here but it would have to be negative because hydroxide has a negative charge. You can use your oxidation charts for this and your polyatomic ion charts if you need to. So once I've created this balanced equation I'm going to write the KSP expression the KSP never has to worry about the reactant side, it only has to worry about the product side. So it's the concentration of magnesium, and that's the ion, times the concentration of hydroxide, and because of this number two, it is squared. So that is the expression for the KSP, the solubility product constant of magnesium hydroxide. All right, now let's go on to solubility and equilibria. Um, we, this was lead phosphate solid, and it, just, and it breaks apart. Notice we have three leads in the molecule, so there are three leads on this side, three lead ions. We have two phosphate ions in this molecule, so we have to have two phosphate ions when it breaks apart. So that's the balanced equation. So first you write the expression, and the expression would be the concentration. Now remember we we're dealing with salts, so we only have to deal with the reactant side. So it's the concentration of lead, and lead is a lead 2 ion, but I have three of them, so I have to have the three exponent, times the concentration of phosphate, all right, and then I have two of them, so it has a uh, exponent of a 2. So that's the, e the equilibrium expression. And you can get that, that is on page 398. And I think in the Prezi, let's see, lead 2 phosphate, I mean, uh, lead, yeah, lead 2 phosphate is right here. There it is. So there's the, the molecule, and there is the KSP expression. And that's the value of the expression if you use some use um, some particular molarities. All right, now, now this one just reminding you about the third and the second power. Now, to calculate the solubility of lead 2 phosphate, now this is where it's going to become a little bit uh, difficult, not difficult, that's not the right word, you just tricky, you got to pay attention. So we're going to calculate the, KS, the, the KSP, the solubility of lead. We're going to pretend that we don't know, okay? So we use the coefficients and we um, to multiply S and to raise S to the right power. So S stands for the solubility of one mole of the salt. Okay, what does that mean? That means we, we're pretending that we have S amount, S amount of lead uh, to phosphate. We can dissolve S amount. That's just a, a variable. 
Well, when I have inside this S amount, that means we have 3S plus 3 times S of lead, and we have 2S of phosphate. See the two? We have this one thing, we have one thing, I'm going to, maybe I'll try to write it out here. We have lead phosphate. This is one thing, one of them. When I have one of them, it breaks apart into three leads and two phosphates because of these. It breaks apart into three leads and two phosphates. Okay? But I don't know how many I have. So I'm going to call it, instead of one, I'm going to call it S amount. Let me erase the one here. All right, I, now I'm going to say I have S amount. So if I have S amount, then I'm going to have 3S amount of this and 2S amount of phosphate. Okay? So now I put the 3S that I have inside the formula and the 2S that I have inside the formula and I solve. So that's what this is. I put the 3S and then it's cubed because that's what the formula says to do. The 2S goes in the brackets. I um, mean, sorry, 3S. 3S goes in the brackets, but then I have to cube that number. And the 2S goes in the brackets, and then I have to square that number. So you'll have a 3 inside and as an exponent. You'll have a 2 inside and as an exponent. All right, so I put that all in, and that's what I did down here. And I kind of, and the KSP value I get off of page um, 398 in your textbook, or the chart. So the KSP value, let me show you the chart lead to phosphate, it's 3 times 10 to the minus 44. Is that right? It's kind of hard to see. Uh, lead to phosphate, 3 times 10 to the minus 44. There it is, right there. There's the KSP value. That's the, that's the solubility of lead to phosphate at 25 degrees Celsius. All right. So that's what that is, 3 times 10 to the minus 44. That's where that number came. So I simplified this. I have 3s cubed, or 3s cubed is 27, because 3 cubed is 27, and s cubed. And then I have 2s squared. So remember, we have to square the 2 and square the s. So this 2 squared is 4, and the s squared is just s squared. Now we're going to simplify it. 27 times 4 is 108, and then s cubed times s squared is s to the fifth. Okay, so we're getting close to solving for S. That's what we're trying to solve for. All right, we divide both sides by 108. So we have just S to the fifth power. And then I have to take the fifth root. I took the fifth root of this to figure out what S was. And so that is the solubility of lead to phosphate. It, it, you can dissolve 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 10 moles per liter of lead to phosphate and you'll have a, a saturated solution. Okay, let's try this again with silver chloride. Now first I'm going to write in the um, formula for silver chloride and write in the balanced equation. Alright, oh, never mind, I got back. Hold on. Okay, yeah, I had a problem, but I got it working. Okay. Here we go. This is silver chloride. Silver has a plus one charge, chlorine a minus one, so they already cancel each other out. That's the solid. We dissolve it and we get the, uh, the balanced equation. And now we're going to write the KSP expression. And it's just going to be the concentration of silver times the concentration of chlorine. That's it. That's the expression. So now this is telling me that the KSP is this number. Okay? So that's this over here. The KSP is that number, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10. And we're going to determine the S, the solubility in molarity, moles per liter. Okay? So what I'm going to do is, if I have S amount of, so, of silver chloride, I have S amount of silver and S amount of chlorine. Because well, there's only one silver in here and only one chlorine in here. So it's S amount of this. One of those gives me one silver and one chlorine. Two of those would give me two silvers and two chlorines. S of those would give me S silvers and S chlorines. So I put S inside the brackets. 
and then this is, this is just s squared. And so it's 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10. I take the square root of both sides so that s equals the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10. So you just got to make sure you get that number in your calculator. Okay, so I put a calculator, and so that the square root of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10 is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5. So that is the solubility. That's how many moles per liter can be dissolved to get a saturated solution at 25 degrees Celsius. All right, so now let's try this. If you calculate the KSP and you get, uh, sorry, if, you, if the calculated KSP, what you just did, like if I have to calculate this number, if you calculate something and, you, and when you get something that's less than the one listed on the chart on page 398 or the KSP given to you, um, then the solution is unsaturated. So basically, if you calculate KSP and the number is smaller than what's on the chart, you have an unsaturated solution. More could be dissolved. If your calculated number is greater, then it's super saturated. And if it's exactly the same, it's saturated. So let's try this next example. We're going to take zinc hydroxide. So I'm going to pause this and write in the uh, formula. You can try writing it your own. All right, now zinc has a plus 2 charge, and OH has a minus 1, so swap and drop. There's my formula for zinc hydroxide. That's it. We're talking about a salt, and it's a solid. So we dissolve it, and we break it apart into its pieces. There's one zinc over here, so there's one zinc here. And there are two OHs over here, so there are two there. So now to write the KSP expression, we don't have to worry about the reactant side because it goes away because it's a solid, it's just the product side. So it's the concentration of zinc times the concentration of hydroxide squared. And it's squared because of that number right there, so it has to be squared. And now, now, now that we know that, we, we're going to figure out the solubility. Um, no, actually we don't have to figure out the solubility. What we're given here is calculate the KSP if we have this much zinc. So we know how much zinc we have. We start off with a 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6 moles of zinc. All right, whatever we have here, we have the same amount of, of zinc hydroxide. We have the same amount of zinc, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6 but we have twice as much hydroxide. So two times the 2.5 times 10 to the minus six. Now do you see that again? One of these gave me one zinc and two hydroxides. Two of these zinc hydroxides would give me two zincs and four hydroxides. Um, S of these would give me one S of that and two S of that. Well this time I know the number, so this number it gives me the exact same amount of zinc and twice as much hydroxide. So now we're going to take these numbers um, right here and put them inside the brackets where the concentration goes. This is a single number. Put it inside the bracket where the concentration goes. So the KSP is going to be 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6 times 2 times 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6, and that whole thing is squared. So you notice the whole portion, twice as much goes in here, and the single amount goes in here. So now we just have to solve for the KSP value. So the KSP value, we just put these into our calculator. Be very careful about the order of operations. Um, it's going to be 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6 times, and then, then I'll bring up a calculator real quick. All right, 2 times 2.5, second function e negative 6. So this one would simplify as 5 times 10 to the minus 6. That has to be squared. All right, now we're going to multiply both of those things together, and I'll give you the... All right, so now KSP value is 6.3 times 10 to the minus 17. Okay, now we're going to compare that to the value on page 398. So on 398, 398, what's the KSP for zinc hydroxide? So I'm going to look at the chart. 
um, uh, the Prezi. Here we go. Find it. There it is. Zinc hydroxide there at the very bottom. And um, it's hard for me to point to it. keeps giving me this blue line. But zinc hydroxide's at the bottom. There we go. And it gives me the KSP is 3 times 10 to the minus 17. That's what the KSP at 25 degrees is. 3 times 10 to the minus 17. So let's go back to our work. So on, the, on that page, it's 3 times 10 to the negative 17. Well, the value we calculated is 6 times 10 to the minus 17. So which one of those is a bigger number, right? Well, the product is greater than the KSP of 3 times 10. So we must have a super saturated solution. This number is greater than 3 times 10 to the minus 17. So it's a super saturated solution. More is dissolved than should be. Okay. All right, that's the end of that. And let's go back to the Prezi. Okay, now I kind of go back and forth in the Prezi. Um, here's another example. That's the silver chloride example. And we already did the silver chloride example. And that's the lead phosphate. And this is showing you how to work out another one, the zinc hydroxide. So we did silver chloride here. And we did um, zinc hydroxide. So now we have this solubility product. Now notice it says the answer keys are over there. So that's where I've worked it all out. But we are going to assign these um, in the Ed Puzzle. And I want you to give it a shot. These right here. There's a, several of them. So I can't do this on the screen. But um, you're going to try them out. Uh, and in Ed Puzzle. All right, so that's all we're going to do for now. So I'll see you.